Would you say that these protests are fueling anti-Semitism? They certainly are. When you have people chanting in support of an intifada, which means the, the suicide bombing of Israeli civilians, when you have people chanting, and now a federal senator from the Labor Party uh, repeating the, the slogan of from the river to the sea, which is an old Arab nationalist slogan calling for the destruction and ethnic cleansing of the state of Israel. When you have these sorts of things happening, it inflames tension and you see it transmit to social media where the tone and the tenor of discourse and commentary has become so nakedly and openly and unashamedly anti-Semitic. I'm seeing things online which I've never seen before with the sort of regularity and the viciousness of the attacks on the Jewish community, the repetition of old anti-Semitic tropes and slogans. And this is all linked to a lack of leadership and what's happening in the public domain. It then flows into every aspect of our society. And if we don't stop it at the top, things will get worse and worse. And we're already seeing alleged terror plots against our community in Australia and around the world. And I fear what will happen if we don't step back from this chasm. Mm. The United Nations has quietly revised down its estimated death toll for Gaza. Initially, it was estimated that the uh, casualty number for women was 9,500 and 14,500 for children. However, those figures have been significantly reduced to under 5,000 for women and 8,000 for children, respectively. So those figures are around half of the numbers in the UN's previous report. C can I get your reaction to this development? What does it tell us? Well, look, from the beginning of the war, many media outlets have been uncritically quoting Hamas statistics for casualties, statistics which are obviously inflated for their own political purposes, statistics which draw no distinction between militants, terrorists and civilians. And a lot of the world, UN agencies and various non-government organisations in the media have been blindly repeating this because it suits their own agenda. I don't expect people to take notice of this because ultimately those who have an agenda of fostering greater hatred of Israel and the Jewish community will ignore this. They will keep focusing on slurs and accusations which hold no basis in fact, like the outrageous claim of a genocide. You have a situation where Israel is fighting a horrific war inflicted on it by Hamas on October 7. It is a just and necessary war to defeat terror, to rescue its hostages and prevent further attacks on Israeli territory. When you compare it, for example, with other wars in recent years, in the Syrian civil war, you had 600,000 people dead, 600,000. I never heard the word genocide mentioned once or the sorts of actions we're seeing in international forums and online as well. In the Yemen civil war, 150,000 people died. Likewise, the same accusations leveled at Israel were never made. But after seven months of a horrific war that was not of Israel's choosing, we now learn, as we really knew all along, that the civilian death toll is less and at a lower proportion than any other modern war of its type. But again, given the propaganda use of these numbers, I don't expect people to actually take note and mm. to now question or apologise for the slurs and accusations which they unfairly uh, levelled for so long. That is what is quite concerning when these figures have been been reported and then they're flooding social media feeds. You know, the revised figures may not reach everyone. Let's look at what's been happening in Sydney. US hip-hop artist Macklemore has performed a new pro-Palestine protest song at his sold-out show in Sydney. And the song, which calls for an end for the war in Gaza, supports student protests on US campuses. And it was met with cheers and Palestinian flags from the audience. Let's take a listen. It has been beautiful to see around the world solidarity with the Palestinian people. People that have spoken up, that have used their voice, that have stood up against genocide, that are advocating for liberation and freedom for all human beings all over the world. Alex, can I get your reaction to the video? Well, this is the sort of hypocrisy that we're seeing everywhere at the moment, where he positions himself as being a peace activist and a human rights activist and a pro-Palestinian activist. But if he were any of those things, he would be calling first and foremost for the end of Hamas. Hamas unleashed a war against Israel, committing some of the most barbaric acts we've seen in modern times. The war that has ensued is just and necessary and reasonably expected from what occurred on October 7. And the Palestinians are suffering for it, no doubt. Many civilians are suffering as a result of this war. 
So if Malcolm Moore actually cared about those people, he would be calling for the downfall and the end and justice for Hamas atrocities, but he's not. And instead, he casually levels the same slurs about genocide, which divides our society further, inflames tension, drives anti-Semitism because it accuses the Jewish people and the Jewish state of committing these horrific crimes of which they're innocent. But this is what's happening right now. And it's shameful to see people who have a platform, who have a voice, who could use that for positive purposes, to bring people together, to speak truth, are doing exactly the opposite.